Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Molnar here. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Marks Weather Northeastern and Weather Eastern. Take a look at this. So we're going to have a storm system cruising across the Great Lakes and the Northeast this later this weekend and early next week. And that could bring some snow to interior sections. Look how it starts to bomb off the coast there. That's pretty interesting. We'll see if that could have any impacts. But look what's forming behind it. This big, massive trough. Yeah, it's looking more like a Great Plains low pressure system here, but will that have any impact on the east to the middle to the latter part of next week? And the later part of the weekend here, how much snow are we looking at here across interior Pennsylvania, New York, and eventually New England? We'll get into all the details and see what's going on out here in the tropics. Do we have a tropical system that might be trying to form here? Well, we do have about a 10% chance. It's not likely, but we'll get into the details Let's cruise on into it here. All right, so taking a look at a winter storm impact here for later this weekend, Sunday into early Monday. We're not looking at too much here. You know, in the green, you might see a coating here and into the yellow. You know, you could approach low-end advisory criteria here, but by any stretch of the imagination, this is not going to be your winter storm to write home about. And snowfall totals, I'll show you the models momentarily to back this up. Yeah, this is where we could see, you know, that two to four... Maybe some areas above 1,200 feet approach 5 inches. The rain is going to be coming in from the west, though. So a lot of this is going to change over to rain come mid to late morning. Uh, but, you know, Binghamton, Scranton, Syracuse, Buffalo, uh, Albany, these areas could pick up 2 to 3 inches before the changeover. It's areas in the Catskills, northeastern Poconos, uh, that could pick up closer to that 4-inch mark above 1,200 feet. All right, so let's take a look at the precipitation outlook here. Take a look at this. So, yeah, we got a couple areas of energy as we move in time. That first wave is really going to weaken that one that was supposed to happen Friday night and Saturday for this area. It's just not going to materialize. It doesn't have enough energy to keep it going. So we're just not going to see those snowfall accumulations materialize in Pennsylvania. Uh, but look at this. As we get into Saturday and into Sunday. Oh, look at that. So here we go. Sunday, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., or 7 a.m. Here we go. We start to see some bursts of heavier snow moving to the northeast in places like Pen Pennsylvania, New York here. But look at this. We're already changing over to rain in Erie and Pittsburgh. How far is that changeover going to occur? Well, 10 a.m., we're still dealing with snow in places like Binghamton, Syracuse, Rochester. Yeah, I do think we're going to pick up a couple inches. This may end up being low-end advisory criteria. Look at that. Binghamton still getting the spiraled bands of snow moving to the northeast at 1 p.m. So we're getting some warm air advection here. That's giving us the snow. But look what starts to happen. Yeah, some areas, some of the valleys here of northern Pennsylvania to upstate New York could start to change over to rain by 10 p.m. on Sunday. Just as we're getting the dry slot coming in behind it here. Take a look at that. Yeah, I know a lot of you snow lovers don't like those dry slots. But look at this. We're getting a burst of snow on the back side of this as this thing strengthens over the Atlantic. And I'll be showing you the surface maps momentarily. But that quickly moves out to sea. You know, we're not seeing too much fanfare with this. And as we go out in time, let's take a look here. Yeah, that system here in the Plains midweek, Wednesday, uh, December 14th. This is going to wash out here in the Northern Plains. Give you up here the chance of some heavy snow. And look what's happening. You guessed it. A lot of you are guessing in advance. Rain is going to materialize here in much of the east. Let's see what happens, though, when it enters the northeast. We start to see wintry precipitation, and freezing rain could be a problem. Keep in mind, this is a little, about a week out, Thursday the 15th. But look at that. We start to see wintry precipitation as we get a cold high pressure up here to the north. So there's going to be a cold high somewhere right up here in this vicinity and that's going to supply some cold air damming here so you're going to start out as snow in parts of new york and pennsylvania and as we progress in time look at that heavier bands of snow setting up friday the 16th yeah it could be a pretty wintry day up here across the northeast and look how it really wraps up into northern new england here we get that comma shaped and this could end up becoming potentially a nor'easter. We'll keep an eye on it here. Models have been flipping back and forth as they normally do. So taking a look at heights here, this gives us an idea of the troughs, ridges, blocking pattern. So we head towards the weekend and we have that classic block up here in Greenland and northeastern North America, but it's also bringing a massive ridge here across the east. So that's going to kind of 
you know, squelch any major snowstorms from developing. You know, we'll see that weakness Sunday into Monday move across the northeast, give us a couple inches in many areas. And you see that trough pinwheeling around the western side of this big old trough up here. Look at this blocking. It's kind of moving down here into the northern plains. We got another system blasting out here into the west coast. That's going to continue to bring you some drought busters out here. That's great news and build up that mountain snowpack. But look what continues to happen up here in the east. This is with that developing system. This massive trough. Wow. Look what's going on up here. We have essentially a massive brick wall from the Gulf of Alaska to Greenland. And that is crazy. So that kind of tells me that many systems won't even be able to make it up here into Canada. So these, these plain systems that are trying to intensify and head north, they will have secondary low development in this area. That's where we're going to get into some problems with some potential. There it is, Saturday, next week, Friday into Saturday. That's the 16th and 17th. We could have some sort of major storm here along the northeast coast, and we definitely want to keep our eyes on this. This could be something that we really, we're not going to lock it in just yet. It's a week out, but we have we have to start watching for this because this pattern is very conducive for this kind of storminess. All right, so taking a look at snowfall models here, here is the European model. This is interesting. It has increased snowfall amounts here, especially in upstate New York. So yeah, this solidifies my thinking that we're going to see a low-end advisory criteria event. This is a pretty pretty straightforward forecast. Now let's fast forward to the end of next... Ooh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, the European model's going crazy next late next week, that 16th storm. Definitely, if you're in any... It is, it is a ways out, but if you're in any of these areas, definitely stay tuned, especially when the European model's coming out with forecasts like this. All right, so the Canadian model here with the snowfall totals. So, yeah, the Canadian's a little bit more bullish here, right around Tompkins County, Cortland County, New York, just south of Syracuse. That's actually forecasting low-end warning criteria. Still think this is going to be an advisory criteria event, though. I don't think too many areas are going to approach six inches. I think two to four inches is going to be a pretty popular number. But look at as we go to the end of next week. Yeah, the Canadian is not anywhere near here where it is on the euro and the gfs so let's take a look at the gfs the crazy gfs i know many of you are like cringing but you know what it is what it is uh short term the gfs has been okay and here it is this is kind of solidifying my belief that this is going to be an advisory criteria event now as we go let's fast forward to next wow yeah i'm going to show you this momentarily on the surface maps but just hold on to your seat here yeah, this is something similar to what we saw December 16th of last year in the Binghamton area. It, we, we got over 40 inches of snow in that storm. Could it happen again? Well, if this system falls, you know, kind of the similar scenario here setting up, it's not to say this won't happen. It's very rare that you get an event like this happen again within a two-year period, but it is possible. And the fact that the GFS is indicating it, I kind of discount it, but the Euro is indicating almost similar amounts here. So that is something we need to keep an eye on here as we go towards the end of next week. I'll have plenty of updates on this. We have plenty of time to watch this. So here we go with the Canadian, pretty interesting model as of late. So there you go. That's first system there in the Ohio Valley fizzles out. But there is our system there on Sunday. Wow, look what's happening out west here. You're going to get lots of mountain snow. That's great news for you, by the way, with the drought. But look what's going on over here in the northeast. We get this system. We get energy uh, in the eastern Great Lakes and this energy off the coast. Let's see exactly what happens with that. So, yeah, it develops it pretty late out in the Atlantic, and there's our midweek system next week blasting to the northeast. But look what has, happens here. This is really curious. This low becomes secondary, and this becomes the primary low. It's still going to bring some pretty warm air up into western New York, western Pennsylvania, but look what's forming on the east end of the Appalachians. This could be a real cold air damming situation as we get this high pressure retreating up here in northeastern North America. This could be a problem, an ice situation. It definitely the rain here on the, look at that. Now we got a third, is third dairy a word? Well, there it is. So that secondary low fades and we'll transfer energy here to the coastline. So that is an interesting solution. All right, so as you take a look at the high resolution Euro, I want to show you here the Euro kind of uh, has 
kind of backed off on this system on Sunday. We're still showing some snowfall accumulations up here in the northeast. Take a look at that. So, yeah, out west here, it's really blasting. But look at this. Yeah, we start, start to get some secondary energy here. So upstate New York into parts of western New England, you're going to be the primary focus of snow. But there we go. The Euro and the Canadian are in agreement with blasting this and bombing this low well away from the northeast coast. And look at this. There's the Euro blasting that low come Thursday, December 15th. And look what we have here. This is a bit more interesting than the Canadian. We have a big old low pressure forming. This is pulling down some cold air. Yeah. For people that like snow, this might be your thing. Look at Friday, December 16th. This is actually the two-year anniversary of the upstate uh, New York and northeast Pennsylvania where you got over 40 inches of snow widespread in many locations. Yeah, the 16th, that is pretty much the anniversary of that two-year storm. Could we be looking at a scenario like that again? Well, that's pretty rare, but you know what? This is kind of reminiscent of it. Take a look at that. Yeah, that's... The Euro is definitely one to watch here because look how long it keeps this low pressure hanging around the northeast. All right, do I really even want to take a look at the GFS? Well, you know what? Being a good forecaster, that's what we always do. We even look at the models that are kind of crazy. But look at here. There's the Sunday system in the northeast. There's the snow moving through. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. It's kind of very similar to the Euro, which is interesting because the GFS rarely ever agrees with the Euro. But there's the midweek system. There it is Thursday, the 15th, and a Friday. What's the GFS do? Oh, wow. GFS has kind of cleaned up its act here. There's the secondary or the primary low back here weakening. This looks like the Euro. So that, you know, the upper air charts are kind of like finally starting to agree with each other a little bit here. And look what we have. We have interior snow. Now, of course, this is still a coastal rain. Wow. Yeah. We're going to zoom in on this momentarily. This is a scenario similar to two years ago across the Northeast. We'll have to see if this materializes. Let's actually, you know, this is a week out, so we got plenty of time to watch it. Not going to say for certain at this rate, but look at this. We'll zoom in on this. It is the GFS, so please take it with a grain of salt. But look at this. When you get into these pinker shades here, see on the snowfall scale here, this is on the order of a half an inch to an almost an inch an hour. And, you know, this, is, this area here was the area that got really dumped on with snow two years ago, right on the si December 16th. So places like Binghamton into parts of north central Pennsylvania got upwards of 40, 45 inches of snow in many areas. So, yeah, the, this is uh, something to watch. We do can get these kind of storms this time of year, and sometimes they can outperform the models. All right, so tropical Atlantic. Yeah, it's this area right here east of Bermuda, 10% chance through day five. Let's just back this up a few frames. It will give us an idea what's going on. So we have a system that looks a little extra tropical here. Take a look at that. And as we go in time, there's Friday into Saturday. It becomes a more cold core low. So at this point now, I'm not too interested in that developing. Across the rest of the Atlantic, look at this from our Caribbean friends and Latin American friends here. Look at you are looking beautiful with the exception for a few showers propagating their way from the northeast. You're probably really enjoying the lower humidity here in places like Jamaica, Hispaniola, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Puerto Rico, and all our lesser Antilles out here and here back towards Belize and Latin America. Let's see, go out here and see if there's any interesting features to be had here. It's always interesting to take a look, even though tropical season really isn't doing much of anything. You do get these spin ups every so often. You take a look right here, down here into the Southern Caribbean, and another one just east of Belize here that will bring some shower and thunderstorm activity. But, you know, nothing too bad to write home about for this time of year. Western Pacific, let's take a look, see if we got anything going on. The land where the tropical season never truly ends. Actually, you know what? There is a system over here uh, towards India. Look at this. Yeah, we've got a system over here. It is Cyclone Mandos, 65 mile per hour winds. It looks like it's going to maintain kind of 
tropical storm cyclone status. This is what they call them over here. But yeah, let's actually zoom in on this. This is pretty interesting. Take a look at a different part of the world here. And as we go in time here, it's going to make landfall right around Friday morning here. Never tried to pronounce any of these city names. They, they, they do look pretty interesting. But there you have it. Look at that. That could be borderline, you know, hurricane force there. Um, and then as we go over towards, here we go, yeah. This is, let's back this up just a few frames for the central Philippines here. This is where we're going to start to see Thursday into Friday. Look at all the shower and thunderstorm activity. Thankfully, this doesn't look like it's going to really develop into much of anything until about Saturday here, where it's just east of the northern part of the Philippines. Look at this. This is a little curious feature here. We come down from a top-down view, and you can see, look at that. I would not be surprised if this becomes a named storm. It's going to stall for a while, and then it looks like it may try to become some even stronger here towards Sunday at 10 a.m. Look at this. It is getting caught up in the westerlies here. You can see that pretty evidently here, and look how it pretty much is getting pulled here to the northeast. So, it may end up sparing the northern and central Philippines of the worst weather. So initially, going into the end of the week and the weekend, you're going to have to deal with some gusty showers and thunderstorms. Look at this. Yeah, it is going to become most likely a typhoon here. You can see it forming an eye. But thankfully, it's going to be pretty much a fish storm here. And as we continue in time here, let's zoom in just a little bit. There we go. So... What else do we have for you? Well, it gets pretty quiet for a while here in the Philippines and over towards Vietnam here. So take a look at this. We got another cyclone potentially forming over here in the Indian Ocean. But as we go through, look at that. There we go. We do have a feature over towards Vietnam here. It doesn't look like it's going to develop into much of anything here, but we'll watch it. And we start to get a little bit more shower and thunderstorm activity here in the Philippines. This is more associated with a cold core uh, cold front here to the north, just south of Taiwan. And that'll continue. This is Monday, Tuesday, the 20th. Yeah, we got another system we're going to have to watch out for here east of the Philippines. That could be a little bit of concern, but look at that. It doesn't really pass through with much fanfare, which is great news. So you're going to have a period of dryness for about a week to week and a half before we bring in some showery conditions. This is Christmas Eve, Saturday the 24th. So look what's waiting off the screen here, essentially. Yeah, we're going to have to take a look and keep an eye on this as we go through the end of the month. So let's take a look at the temperature pattern here. See if there's any chances of big Arctic air intrusions. Well, it's kind of bottled up here in the northern plains. You see, we're kind of moderate in, into the northeast here into the 40s. And we stay into the 30s and 40s, upper 30s across northern New England. Here's the northern plains. And we're blasting some cooler air down here into Montana. Look at that, teens for highs. But we're also pushing this warmth up here into the east. We're still in upper 30s, right around 40 here in the northeast for your Sunday into Monday. Look at this. We get a surge of warmth, but look what's happening out west. That's that big trough that I was telling you about that's going to pinwheel across the eastern part of the United States for later next week. And this is going to be like a wall of blasting air that's going to move to the east here. And we're still remaining marginal in the northeast here. We start to get some warm air up ahead of it next Wednesday, December 14th. So we start to warm towards the 40s here, but look what's coming. This is going to be pinwheeling back to the east here for later next week. Extended outlook from my hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton's Upper Susquehanna River Valley. We're starting off Friday and Saturday, more sun than clouds, which is nice up towards 40. Cold starts Saturday morning at 16. The big story is Sunday. We'll start out as snow, transitioning over to rain and snow mix in the afternoon. Above 1,200 feet, that's where you could see closer to 4 inches, and the valleys will see about 2 inches before tapering off towards Sunday evening. Into Monday, we have... You know, sun and clouds, more clouds than sun, and then Tuesday, sunny skies, 36. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Marks Weather Northeastern. Don't forget, link is in the description down below for my winter outlook for this winter season. And also, if you want to buy me a coffee, tip jar also down below. You can find it down there. Also, Facebook Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern, also Hurricane Northeastern, also Twitter at Weather Eastern. And don't forget, meetingmark.com with northeastern.com. Thanks for joining me.